Greetings out there on YouTube land. Uh, today's video is going to feature the Princeton Reverb Amp, one of the finest amps in the history of mankind. I guess you could say it's the little brother of the equally famous uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb, except that it lacks one of the features that the Deluxe Reverb has, and that is an adjustable uh, bias control for the output tubes. So in this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to convert the Princeton Reverb Amp to an adjustable bias control just like its big brother, the Deluxe Reverb. We'll start off by reviewing the schematic of the Princeton Reverb and see exactly how the bias circuit is wired. Then I'm going to show you uh, the method of conversion and I will actually install a uh, adjustable bias control in this amp and then demonstrate it uh, during a biasing procedure. If this sounds interesting then please stay tuned. Rusty, are we ready to get to work? Okay, here's the AA764 schematic. Uh, this Conversion will also work with the AA1164 and probably other uh, of the older style uh, Fender circuits. Since the transformer uh, in the Princeton has no dedicated uh, tap for bias voltage, Fender connects to pin 4 here of the GZ34 rectifier and takes off 330 volts AC and sends it through a 100K 1 watt resistor to reduce the voltage and then sends it through a diode for half wave rectification. What that means is that the way the diode is oriented with the positive side to the right, negative to the left, only the negative half of the alternating current will be allowed to pass. We then smooth out that ripple with a 50 microfarad at 50 volt filter capacitor and then we reduce the voltage a little further with a 27k resistor to ground before we send it over here to the intensity pot of the tremolo and then up to the grids of the 6v6 tubes now the way grid biasing works is when you apply a negative voltage to the grids of the tubes. It's like you're creating sort of a porous fence across the tube which will hinder the flow of current through the tube because the negative charge on the grid will repel the negative electrons which is what the plate current consists of. If you increase the negative charge on the grids you will reduce the plate current and if you reduce the negative charge on the grids, you will increase the plate current. And plate current is one half of what you need to know when you're determining the uh, plate dissipation of the tube, which is how we bias them. The other thing we'll need to know is the plate voltage. Now, we've previously discussed several different ways to bias this amp. The original way that you uh, it could have been done is to alter the value of the 27k resistor. If you increase this value you will increase the bias uh, voltage and therefore reduce the plate current. If you reduce the value of the resistor more of the bias voltage will go to ground so less will reach the grids and you will increase the plate current. Now in previous videos we've already discussed other ways to bias uh, a Princeton amplifier. Uh, one is to uh, jumper the two cathodes and install a single resistor to ground. In other words, change it from purely grid biased to cathode biased. Uh, in so doing, uh, depending on the value of the resistor, you can adjust your plate current in both tubes. A little more detailed way to do it is to apply different resistors to each cathode. You select a resistor value for this cathode that will give you exactly the plate current you want and a slightly different resistor value to this plate uh, to this cathode to give you the plate current you need for this tube. Now in this video we're going to address the 27k resistor down here and we're going to install a variable potentiometer. 
that will allow us to uh, control the amount of grid bias voltage that we send to the tubes. Now granted, we won't be able to individually bias them and match them, but we will very easily be able to bias them as a pair. Now here are two uh, detailed diagrams. The upper one is the original fender circuit that we've already reviewed. I put it here just for comparison. Down here is the converted circuit. Let's see how it works. We come off the same pin 4, the GZ34, we go through the same resistor, the same diode, and here's the first change. The 50 microfarad at 50 volt capacitor is going to be changed to 50 microfarads at 100 volts. This you should do on any Princeton reverb amp uh, because the 50 at 50 is inadequate. The voltage up here often exceeds 50 volts and you're playing Russian roulette by using a undervalued capacitor to ground here. So we pass over our 50 at 100 volt capacitor which smooths out our ripple and then instead of the uh, 27k resistor to ground we're going to put in a 10k linear, linear pot here and run from one end of it 27k the original resistor to ground but now we're going to interpose an extra 10k of resistance between the voltage and ground this will give us our variability this will act as a voltage divider then which will send varying amounts of bias voltage over here to the intensity pot like it did in the original circuit and then up to the grids of the 6v6s. Now hopefully that all made good sense. Uh, I think it's time now to get started on the procedure. Hey Rusty, are you anxious to help me with this video? Uh, you don't look very energetic to me. Now here's the amp we'll be working on today. It's a 1966 uh, Fender uh, Princeton Reverb uh, and we're looking at the bias circuit right here which is up in the uh, upper left corner by the uh, indicator light. Okay, let's take a look at the circuit, and it's exactly what the schematic led us to believe. Uh, here is the wire bringing the 330 volts from the GZ34 pin 4. We go through the 100K ohm resistor through the diode. Here is the 50 at 50 uh, smoothing capacitor. In this case, they're in parallel to get the right value. And then here is the uh, 27K resistor. To ground. So this is where we're going to uh, make our modifications. This will uh, become a 50 microfarad at 100 volt capacitor and this is going to turn into an adjustable pot uh, with three outputs. Okay, here's the finished adjustable bias circuit. Uh, several things you have to pay attention to. Because this is a negative voltage circuit, the wiring of the capacitors and of the diode are backwards to what you may expect. The capacitor, the filter capacitor, is positive to ground and the diode must be uh, in this position with the positive side of the diode toward the power input and the negative side out. Now the 27K resistor now goes to the left hand lug of the pot. The uh, output of the power supply now goes to the right hand lug of the pot and the uh, intensity control is now connected to the wiper, the center lug of the pot. I put a little knob on here so that I can adjust it easily and uh, I think it looks very uh, presentable. I also had to make a little bracket here which I mounted on an existing lug uh, here, this is one of the bolts that uh, holds the transformer, so there's no holes drilled, no modification of any sort. If you wanted to go back to original, you could, with no evidence uh, of any changes ever having been made. Okay, uh, it's all finished. The amp is uh, plugged in, turned on, and I'm seeing that I have a negative 38 uh, volts of uh, grid bias with the knob at its minimum setting and then I go to the maximum negative grid bias and it goes up to minus 52.3 
volts. Now hopefully within that range will be the value necessary to set the proper plate dissipation for the 6V6s. That's what we'll check next. Just to demonstrate how nicely this uh, circuit works, this is the plate current with the uh, grid bias at maximum, which is about 52.5 negative volts. Now, I'll show you how easy it is to adjust the plate current. I'm going to slowly bring the knob up so that I'm reducing the negative grid bias. And say I wanted to have 20 milliamps of plate current, I would set the knob right there. Okay, now uh, we're biasing the tubes. Um, I've adjusted the plate current to be exactly 20 milliamps. Okay, the plate voltage is 419. So here's the result of the biasing process. Plate current 18 milliamps in the left tube, 20 in the right. 419 plate voltage in both, so this one is 7.54 watts of plate dissipation. This one's 8.38. We normally accept 12 watts as maximum, and for uh, tubes biased in this way, that is grid biased, uh, usually go with 70% of the maximum. So 8.4 would be the maximum. This is just below 8.4. This is a ways below it. Now, as you can see, the tubes aren't ideally matched. And this method of biasing is probably not the best in the world for mismatched tubes. If you tend to use uh, mismatched tubes, uh, you might be better off uh, biasing each one individually with a resistor to the cathode. Select the resistor value that gives them equal uh, plate current and plate dissipation. If you use match tubes, and this is by far the best method, because you can uh, rebias an amp in a matter of just a very few minutes. Well, I thought it might be good to see if it still worked before I put it all back in the cabinet. So let's do a little sound check on this beast. <laughs> Well, the tremolo works. That's at 5 and 5 speed and intensity. Let's crank it up to 10 now for all you tremolo hogs out there. Amazingly enough, it still works. So let's put this chassis back in the cabinet with its shiny new adjustable bias control. Well, that about does it for this video. Um, time to slip the chassis back in the cabinet and see how everything sounds. Um, the modification back here probably took uh, maybe an hour or a little more. But then once the modification was done, biasing this amp took a matter of a minute or two. Um, so, as you can see, having it an adjustable bias knob like this really helps. Uh, Rusty and I really appreciate your, your time and interest. I hope that I've explained everything to you uh, in an understandable way and that you will subscribe if you haven't already and join us again in the near future uh, when we post our next video. Thanks so much.